Monday night love session. Check us out. Generation slow jams conversation. Late night stimulation. Call in love session. Love session. Monday night. Good evening, good evening, good evening. That's my Akila Trine impression, lightweight. Um, shout out to the team. School is back, and a lot of people are missing today, but we got a surprise uh, special guest host in the building. Shout out to Courtney. She's uh, She pulled up on us today, thank goodness, because I would have been sitting here by myself. Uh, but she works with me at Revolt TV. And um, yeah, she works with me on the news team. We, dang, it's a little feedback. We do we do a lot of different stories on different artists. We've collaborated a, a bunch of times, and when at some point I'm gonna try to get this feedback down. But um, <laughs> yeah, so we uh, we've collaborated a lot of times, and so I was like, "Yo, come through. We about to do the show. We about to talk about uh, you know women empowerment, black women empowerment." As you can see, the book right here, a hundred things. A hundred things that black women should know. And uh, we're going to talk about that. And we're going to, um, you know, so I, I definitely would love, I, I needed one of my sisters to be here with me to bring it in. So welcome, Courtney. Thanks Shout for out. having me. Yeah, thanks for pulling up. And um, today <clears throat> we're going to talk about a few things, but I just wanted to also bring to the table what this whole Love Sessions is about so let me introduce to you the show. Love Sessions is intellectual stimulation from 10 p.m. to midnight. Our conversation is devoted to bringing the conversation, or bridging the conversation gap between men and women as a means to combat the war on relationships. We cover topics that are often overlooked, uh, unmentioned, or outright taboo. To shed light on our uh, to shed light on our idiosyncras idiosyncrasies, if I said that right, but whatever, if I didn't, um, and as a way to humanize the love experience, our conversation is real, refreshing, and relevant. You are guaranteed to walk away from our show with a greater insight of your uh, of yourself and other and others around you. At the end of the day, we all echo. Shout out to Echo. Uh, we all echo the same sentiment. I need love. Class is now in session, and I'm gonna kick it over to my right to Courtney. So I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors for today. We have Aqua Hydrate, the refreshing water that you see right in front of you. We also have Revision Publishing and Dear Zuri. Dear Zuri means beauty in Swahili. And it's a movement to encourage women to properly heal from internalized pain and practice healthy communication. You can follow up on this movement at, at, on Instagram at Dear Zuri or Dear Zuri or her personal page, Tangy Love Yourself Terry. And that's Yuri, Zuri with a U, Z. U Z U R I. Yeah. yeah. Tricky spelling, but that's how you find it. Follow up. Shout out. Um, shout out to Dear Zuri. And um, so if you want to connect with us, uh, we actually on um we actually are streaming live right now on the Morris Media page on uh on YouTube. So if you're in the YouTube Follow Morris Media on YouTube. We're streaming live, so um, so check us out on that platform. But if you want to check out, uh, if you want to stay connected to U Nation Radio, um, check us out. We're at U Nation Radio um, on Instagram, and you could also look us up on Facebook. That's at U Nation, or that's U Nation, and um, also you can look us up on Twitter, which is underscore U Nation, or sorry, which is at you nation and underscore uh radio and it's also us all the letter you not the not the uh the word you so um also 
If you would like to join this conversation, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things. But tonight's topic is devoted to a hundred things. There's a lot. A hundred is a lot, but it's a hundred things that every black girl should know. So if you want to call in, if you... If this is a topic that interests you, you want to call in, uh, you uh, you can be a part of this conversation at 323-293-3375. That's 323-293-3375. And, uh, yeah, now we're open for the t- <laughs> for the convo. Call us now. Yeah. Hit us up. Well, call in a few minutes cool. when we're talking about this. Call <laughs> so, us later. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, whenever. If you want to call now, call now. Tell us about what you thought about Walking Dead. No, not Walking Dead. <laughs> Walking Dead is out. Uh, the walk- there was Walking Dead, but it was in the Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of Thrones. That, uh, Spoilers yeah. if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Game of Thrones last night was kind of crazy. Uh, all the shows are kind of crazy. Sundays are like a turn up yes. night nowadays because it's like so many different shows shows and what shows do you watch on sundays well normally i watch insecure i haven't seen it yet but that's one of my top shows that i watch on sundays um i know a lot of people are into power into um game of thrones i haven't really gotten into them yet but i've, I've heard good things and i'm always on twitter so i kind of feel like i watch it but yeah because twitter is definitely <laughs> uh all, all social media they just it's like people can't wait to spoil like do memes like it's like people cannot wait to to spoil uh any kind of show like the second the east coast watches the show they're um it's all over yeah they're sending memes they're doing and and just by the memes alone you'll know exactly what happened in that episode pretty much so that's the fun part about it i feel like i feel like when I'm watching a show. I like to live tweet with my friends so we can have those dialogues and conversations. Like, even with Insecure, that's one of the big ones that I do live tweet with because it's like, girl, did you believe he did that? Or did you believe she did this? How would yeah. you act? I feel like that's a part of it. So, I mean, it sucks for us being over here on the West Coast, but, I mean, in reality, like, a lot of people on the East Coast, like, it's not spoilers for them. It's only yeah, spoilers yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or if you're in the Midwest. So, tell me this on Insecure. We are, we've been having a lot of Insecure insecure combo what um what team would you say you are like team lawrence team isa team mimi uh is it mimi or molly molly, molly i always call it <laughs> i don't know why but molly you know whose side are you on in these scenarios well i'm I'm kind of in the middle of Team Issa and Lawrence because I feel like I've been on both sides before. You can't be in the middle. Yes, I can. I can, I can be wherever I want. Yeah, yeah. I do anything I want. <laughs> but if I don't, I don't want to take a side because I feel like I've, I can relate to both sides. I've been the person who's messed up in a relationship. I've been the person who's uh, been done wrong in a relationship. And you're ch- each side, you're trying to navigate something that's difficult. And, I, I mean, I don't think it's really fair to pick sides because everybody has their reasoning behind what they do what they do and um, i don't think lawrence is wrong for for moving on and dibble and dabbling in in his relationships and okay we got a call not to say i want you to finish your thought but yeah (laughs) call her uh what's going on what's the deal what's the dealio hi i just want to call in um about uh, black girl magic and really i just want to call in about um the book okay by uh, Tara Stinson. I really think it's an amazing novel. Okay. Well, thank you. She's she's in the building. We're gonna uh, we're gonna bring her on probably like in literally like five minutes. You wanna uh, you got a question or you just wanted to shout her out? Yeah, um, I do have a question for her, so um, I'll give you guys a call back. Uh, are you gonna call back for sure? You are you want to ask it now? Or what like? Uh, no. <laughs> I, okay, I, definitely. I just call back. all right. Cool, cool. Thank you so all much. Right. Talk to you later. All right, so we got one caller. She <laughs> says she's gonna call us back though when you come on, and she says she loves your book. And uh, yeah, all right. Sidebar, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So um, so uh, yeah, it's a lot going on. So tell me this: what about the the? What's your thoughts on this whole? whole phase that Issa is having to experience that she's going through. Is that like, what is that? Let's be real. Everybody goes through a whole phase. I mean, in my opinion. It's like, you might not call it a whole phase, because that's just a little harsh, but it's a discovering yourself. And there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with a woman wanting to see her options. Yeah. And I think that's just what it is. We give it the title of whole phase, because that's what society says it is, but mm-hmm. that's not necessarily what it is. It's just you, like 
being out there, just being being yourself and wanting to date. Isn't that what dating is? It's just just dating people and, and going and doing stuff. And yeah, you might have sex with them if you like them that much, but that doesn't necessarily make you a hoe. I don't... Yeah, I mean, they're calling it a hoe phase. I'm just... <laughs> I, I'm just the world uh, is calling it a hoe Yeah, phase. I'm not, you know, I'm not the judge and jury on this subject. I definitely think that there's times where, yes, it's better to have the experiences in life so that you don't spend your time thinking the grass is greener right. on the other side and sometimes you gotta experience the grass sometimes you gotta touch the fire to find out if it's really hot and right. all that stuff so I definitely understand that perspective um hmm okay so <laughs> we get to no I, I know I'm like looking at world stuff I'm looking at everything <laughs> so there's a lot going on in the world and something that we you know two things well first and foremost first and foremost our young brother um our young brother uh detroit just pulled up on a shout out to detroit what's up, what's up? Uh, and um so basically what's going on in the world is keep the sneak he's a young he's a he's an artist from the bay area mm-hmm. legend bay legend really and he's fighting for his life he's in critical condition so we just wanted to make sure we send some some good energy and prayers to him and his family um, in this time, uh, he was recently shot and after a concert, I believe, in Richmond uh, in the Bay Area. So we, we're hoping that he recovers and we be sending good vibes. Um, also, in unfortunate news, uh, Mystical recently turned itself in on an alleged rape charge. Um, TMZ is posting this that he's um, alleged to uh, rape the woman. Um, and uh, he... Danger. Yeah, he's on a two million dollar bond. It's seriously danger. I'm like, that is bad, man. And they say they got DNA ev- evidence. And right. Like, so supposedly it happened back in October. Yeah. And then um, they collected DNA evidence from the the casino that it was at, mm. um, and it was him and a friend. I think his last name is Holman, mm-hmm. and they um, lured this woman woman assaulted her mm. in some way, um, and yeah. I mean, it's coming to like now. There's a, there's another woman that they're searching for. I don't know if she has turned herself in yet, but this other woman who um, called the victim and said, "Hey, tried to coerce coerce her and not to press charges against Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I yeah, think is like a, yeah. that kind of rubbed me the wrong way because yeah, it's like bad move. Um, but it's not even like, mystical. What he did was wrong, terrible, mm-hmm. like it, it, allegedly. Yeah. But the fact that there's another woman involved as an accomplice and yeah. just being like don't try, don't char, don't charge them don't do anything yeah, to yeah. Cover Win- it witness up. tampering and all that stuff yeah it was yeah. like sis like sis come on like you gonna tell me that it's not not to do it not yeah. not to turn him in because yeah. this is your homeboy like yeah because he made a good couple of good records right. <laughs> um but uh detroit just sat down on it uh sat down on the conversation um Welcome Detroit. Um, something else. What was I going to ask you about the um, oh the solar eclipse? So yeah. the solar eclipse just happened. We we shout out to us. We was on the roof. Yes. Uh, today, uh, this, yeah, popping champagne <laughs> on the revolt roof today, uh, which was kind of dope. Solar eclipse. So how was that experience today? Uh, having that eclipse moment. Did you get to see it? Yeah, you saw it. I was there. No, I'm talking <laughs> I to, saw yeah, it. According. I thought it was cool. I mean, I've never seen a solar eclipse before, so I think it was pretty dope to see that. I had the, the glasses on, so it was cool. I was like, you know, not... Is that happens every like 40, 50 years. So I, hopefully it's not a once-in-a-lifetime thing. God, like, God willing, I lived that long. Mm. Um, but... Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was nice to see other people on the roofs and watching the news and seeing people out. And it's re- like it, it was a nice way to start a Monday and to start your day. So I think it was. I felt I felt dope. fresh. Yeah, yeah, I felt like I was a part of something cool. Yeah. Uh, Detroit was good, man. How was the week? Hold up, black folk. Uh, What's up? I can't What's up? hear you yet. Think your mic ain't up. Say check one two one two. There we go. All right. What but up? it was cool. Uh, you saw that clips. I did not. Uh, I woke up this You're morning. Like the only person in the world that didn't see the solar eclipse. Yeah, it's like it's like six of us. You know? I I read about it thinking it was gonna be tonight. Oh yeah. Uh. <laughs> Missed it completely, but it's cool. I mean. Well, forty, forty more years to see it. Yeah, that. next one. That's, that's a life goal. <laughs> uh, what about uh, insecure? Did you see insecure? Did you see? Uh, did you did see I see insecure? Power. I saw power. I think Insecure watched me because I was <laughs> yeah. uh, having a conversation. Um, 
but I did see myself. But I did see Power. I saw Power at um. So if you subscribe to Power Online, you get it at like eleven thirty the night yeah. before. Oh okay. I thought it was midnight. Um. I'd start doing that. Extra special. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know why. Like my arms went numb when I saw it, and that, and I'm I was projecting somebody homeboy. else. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you the spoiler is out. Everybody, <laughs> homeboy got donkey of the day. You know what I'm saying? Because um, you got donkey of the day. Uh, the kid, what's the kid name? The, Tariq. Tariq. Tariq is a scumbag, and just I know you don't watch the show, but I'm gonna just we gonna, we gonna you know. <laughs> oh, you don't watch the show. I don't, she don't watch, watch the show. show. This is kid, that like a particular reason no i just i didn't get into it when it first started and i feel like i missed the boat oh I'm so sorry. phones off I thought, phones on vibrate i thought i did that already <laughs> actually my phone ain't on headlines vibrate. headlines but um yeah Tariq is a scumbag he uh he got donkey of the day okay from charlamagne because basically oh we actually did a uh if you want to go on revolts page we did a live stream with the um with the girl uh oh. that um dang i can't think of her name I think she got she got killed in the episode but uh she tori Norton. tori Norton. yeah uh, she did a live stream with revolt today talking about her experience on um on power and so that is actually live on the revolt um uh, facebook page cool. um like that's her name, right? Yeah, Notori Naughton. Okay. Formerly of the OW. No, 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 not her. So oh, that's okay. I'm like, hold See, on. look, I don't watch the show. So yeah, yeah I'm so it's uh, <laughs> Dasha. Oh, Danisha Hopkins. Danisha Hopkins. Yeah. So she. Um, that's that's the girl that she plays a young the young girl. <laughs> anyway, she's on she's on power, and she got killed because she got an older brother who wants to be a gangbanger, and it's just. It was just a bad thing in the show. Spoiler alert for people that don't have the internet, but clearly you do because you're watching us. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she got killed. Her brother's a, a scumbag because he didn't even try to save her. And he's doing all this bad stuff. Well, at that point, he couldn't save her. Cause no, he could have because he, he, he could have yelled out. It was a million people there no, at the could. party. No, no, no. He couldn't. He couldn't. He didn't know what was going to happen at the party. No, I'm no. But what I'm saying is, is just like when he got donkey the day, which I'm repeating what basically <laughs> summarizing what was said is the kid goes outside, uh, and when the girl was when his girl was being assaulted on the on the home invasion, he was like he yells out. He's like, oh no, stop, whatever, right? He says something which alerts everybody, and now it, it, something else happens. But what I'm saying is, is in that moment when he saw his sister being assaulted, he should have he should have been screaming out the same but, way. But where which were they? Would've, which would have drawn attention. They were in the back of a school dance. People were people. Would've what time? Heard. Okay, so what? Okay, okay, you Look, completely you gotta, missed the entire situation. They were at a school dance at night. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be meeting his girl outside in the back. In an alley, yeah, yeah. so there's nobody else out there. He you was gotta the, try, bro. The, but here's the thing: Look, if I lower you in Boys in the Hood, where were they at? They were he, in the alley, and what? No. The they said, "Ricky." Nah, okay, but <laughs> in, number and, one, don't go to the alley. Yeah, right, and I didn't. In LA. He thought he was meeting the girl, but see, the, why was he avoiding him? Because he had already put two and two together. Well, they're gonna kill me. So that's why he was avoiding him. That's why that's why he was trying to get out of town to go to Connecticut. Yeah. So he already knew that that was the plan. So once. Oh, boy wasn't going to kill Raina. He wasn't going to kill his sister until she opened her mouth and said, I know who yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, she mis was doing too much. misinformed, he, she thought that he was just a dirty cop because that's what the brother had told him. He didn't, the brother didn't give the entire story. About why he was he, he just said down, he, yeah. he just said that she was a dirty cop. He, he took that at, he thought when she said, I know who you are, that he knew all the other stuff yeah, yeah, that yeah, Tariq yeah, knew. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, at that point, yeah. she can't live either. Yeah. Mind you, he killed his two boys that yeah. was in on a job with him. So if he killed them and he killed Raina and they in the back of a dark alley and Tariq yells out, hey, and there's nowhere else to go, guess know, what? Yeah, he going to die, but I, I'll, I'll put it like this. I'll be honest with you. Just just, just from realistic situ scenarios, I've been in situations and a real-life scenario with my real brother where i seen somebody, like, trying to stick him up. And I'm like, I just yell. I'm just like, yo, you know, like, yo, uh, it was at a gas station that night. I just yelled at him, like, yo, uh, give me a soda. Just so, like, the dude knows, like, I'm looking at him the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want – it's just a situation where it's like, look, either you might you might catch two bodies, but just so you know, 
I it ain't. I'm not just gonna stand by while and watch somebody execute any of your family members, whatever. And and that's just real life. Well, you know now now he gets to get justice. I'm sure whoever killed Rain is gonna die. But if both of them die there, nobody gets him because nobody knows what happened or and or why. Keep in mind, nobody knows what's going on with Tariq. Ghost doesn't know. You know what I'm saying? Because Tariq has been such a the the ironic part is he's hated his father for doing so much of the lying that he's been doing. He mm -hmm. ended up in the same position, lying to his parents. So when he needed the help, when he could have been helped, couldn't come because he became his who his father was. So yeah. uh, speaking of fathers, um, I'm going to transition the convo, but it's still power related. But I want you to also chime in. But all right, so here goes something that was empowered. And I, and I thought about you, um, for instance, when... Um, uh, so who's goes homeboy again? I'll be forgetting names. I'm already, Tommy. Tommy. So Tommy uh, forgets. Tommy finds out that his mom has been lying to him his whole life. His dad wanted to be a part of his life. Um, she always says he left. He left us. He left us, but he really left her. Right. Right. And something I wanted to ask you about, because Tommy was basically a mama's boy his whole life, because that's all he had was his mom, and his dad. He never knew his dad. So. You know, just knowing you personally, like, I know that you, your father wasn't in your life, right? And so, what if you, what if in that same scenario, you found out one day that your mom, like, was lying to you the whole time, and, and your dad was trying to be in your life, but she just hid it from you? What, like, how would that change? Because the dude almost, he flipped on his mom completely and did a 180, and now he's, like, a daddy's boy or something. You get what I'm saying? Is that do you how how does that how would that play in your life with with your relationship with your mom? I would have to assume that I'd be irate, especially seeing how it just happened to my little brother. Mm -hmm. The exact same scenario where she she um, decides to tell my little brother, you know, the person that you think is your parent is not your parent, and he only my son my my brother only found out because. My mother gave permission to the actual dad to actually say something, and the guy had been around. So he stopped talking to my mom for a good two weeks. He, I think he actually left the house. You know, he's in high school. You know what I'm saying? So being a man and you understand it, what we see all the time are moms and daughters, moms and daughters. And then every now and then somewhere there's a dad and their dad but that's like a dream for us having a dad for most of us is as good as making it to the league or whatever like it's a it's a pipe dream to actually have a, a actual biological so to know that i could have had that and you know we go as a man you go up searching for answers but there's not many people you can go to because you're usually surrounded by women so you got to make your own way and all you looking for is a little bit of guidance guidance and you could have had that your entire life it sucks you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, so Tom, you can relate to his anger in that sense because he almost like choked his mom out. Like he threatened her life. He did. Now, once once the dad said what he said, like she had good reason to do what she did. You know what I'm saying? And if you think about it, when she yell, when she yells at him and says your dad was a killer and a drug dealer, and he's like, Mom, I'm a killer and a drug dealer. <laughs> like she didn't. Nobody has that for their kids. Nobody foresees that. You know what? Yeah, yeah, My gonna son's be... gonna be a killer and a drug dealer too. Right. They should mess. Like she don't, she's yeah. trying to prevent you from being exactly. Like what he was, yeah. and then so once he attested to that, then you know I, I thought he should have. But you know, if you know Tommy, which she doesn't, he's not the <laughs> most. He's the most irrational person that there is. Very impulsive. I see. All right, well, take us to a break because we're about to have. We're gonna dive into this conversation. Um, got a break song? No, are you looking at me? <laughs> I do, but <laughs> I forgot which one it is. All but right. we are going to commercial break. Pull us, cue us up. Yeah. <laughs> yes 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 we are glad to be back in the building and someone has decided to join us um mrs tara stinson give a round of applause for, all right a <laughs> hundred things the black woman should know or black so what Black girl. Black girl. Hundred things every black girl should know. Right. And so before we get in that, we are going to let you know exactly who this beautiful and talented woman is. Please bear with me <laughs> as I try. Akila, you are all too talented. So Tara is a veteran songwriter born in Birmingham, Alabama, and raised in Oakland, California. East. 
East. Uh, <laughs> I don't. It, 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 I just thought that. I about to say that. I about like, it didn't say that right there. It just said Oakland, <laughs> California. She told me she was a skyline, skyline Tigers. So, yeah. <laughs> In her early career, she penned songs for artists. I should probably make this bigger. I got wear glasses or something, but I don't. She penned songs for artists, not including and limited to Destiny's Child, uh, Khalees. My phone keeps going off. Jesus, woman. Kelly Rowland, Deborah Cox, and has collaborated with Raphael Sadiq, as she just stated. Um, Dr. Dre, uh, you, you Kimi? You Kimi Nagano from Nagano, Little Dragon. From Little Dragon, Kanye West, Andre 3000, and many others. Her very first film soundtrack placement was on the motion picture Men in Black. And she has since worked with various mediums ranging from TV to film with a wide range of artists. She co-wrote the Grammy nominated show, Show Me the Money, Show Me the Way, and the Illumination album, that is Illumination, right? Illumination album of the legendary band Earth, Wind, and Fire. Tora and her longtime writing partner, Raphael Sadiq, wrote and produced the song Gonna Be All Right. Performed by Steven Tyler of Aerosmith for epic and animated film starring Beyonce. Wait, <laughs> it's it keeps cutting out on me. Um, Be All Right, performed by uh, starring Beyonce. They also wrote and produced all of the songs for the musical film Black Nativity. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Starring Forrest Whitaker, Jennifer Hudson, Angela Bassett. Jacob, Lattimore, Mary J. Blige, Luke James, Tyrese, and Nas. Oh, wait, but there's more. <laughs> Tara and Raphael Sadiq nominated for uh, Astrid and Simpson Songwriter Award and the genre, and the, sorry, garnered Grammy nomination for collaborating songs, and they co wrote <clears throat> called Good Man, Sadiq's Stone Rolling album, on which he was the featured artist. Tara is also a freelance A&R consultant and won the Grammy for her first A&R project, The Awakening of Leandra Johnson. In addition, Tara was an A&R director for Music World Entertainment BT Sunday's Best. Franchise contestant, contestant and winner, including Amber Bullock, Joshua Rogers, Andrew Helms, um, Elder uh, Goldwire, and, and Spite. Um, so Alexis Spite. Mm-hmm. Alex, is that the Gospels? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ooh. okay, true. <laughs> you did that. Um, <laughs> who released top 10 gospel singing albums. Additionally, um, Tora works with a variety of genres, artists, and vocal producers, arrangers, and choirs, coordinators, including but not limited to Jesus, um, <laughs> Paloma Faith, Kim Burrell, tr- Trombone Shorty, Shaka Khan, Paris Hilton, The Reef, The Band, Patti LaBelle, Ain't You Busy, and the television show The Underground, amongst others. She served in the lead uh, lyricist and animated film Rio. Oh, Rio, yeah. Rio, uh-huh. starring Oscar yeah, Wilde. I'm about to I'm about to end right here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, with winners Jamie Foxx and Anne Hathaway. She also co-wrote Airplay to end the title song and films Beyond the Lights and Champions at the end of the song 2016 film In Hands of Stone featuring Usher and Ruben Blades. There's a lot more, but I won't get to it because my phone makes me read slow. <laughs> but just uh, give phone, huh? again. Um, no, a round of applause. I'm, I'm too. But round of applause, and I'm, <laughs> right. we really appreciate you being here today. <laughs> Thank you for and having And we're me. talking about a very important subject. I'm just reading through different eps, excerpt, excerpts. Excerpts. Mm-hmm. Excerpts. That's how I said. Thank you. Uh, I'm like, what is that noise? <laughs> All of my uh, excerpts, you know, and uh, this is a hundred things that black women every every sorry, black girl yeah this is a hundred things that every black girl should know a hundred things that every black girl should know and this is a very important subject so important that people are already calling in to uh you know so this is you know first and foremost is town biz you know so we gotta do this yes. do it for the bay yes. you know do it for mac dre but um, <laughs> <Not> for <Keith. laughs> And do it for Kate. You know, mm-hmm. shout out to him and his family. I pray, you know, for, for, for them to uh, have a speedy recovery. Um, so just reading through the excerpts, I'm like, this is a lot of great information. Is this like uh, something that you, is this your personal experiences or are these are, how Mostly. did you come up with the, the book? Mostly my personal experiences. Just kind of like, especially being in the entertainment industry for so long. You see, like, women just get dragged, objectified, marginalized. And I was just like, oh, my God, if I could, if I would, if I would have known 
then what I know now, I would have been, I would have saved myself so much pain, money, hurt, embarrassment, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was actually, I, I figured out the moment when I, when I finally decided, because I've been wanting to do it even since high school, when I transferred from Fremont to Skyline. Mm -hmm. And I saw the But difference. you don't have Fremont. <laughs> <laughs> Fremont awesome. where? No, I don't. Fremont, California or Fremont High? No, Fremont, Fremont High. high. Yeah. Fremont here? Um, I, I'm no. from Oakland. Okay. Fremont, man. Oh, oh there's, no, there's a Fremont out here. So oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was, you know, I went to Fremont, and then um, I decided that my mom wanted me to um, go to a better school, so I transferred to Skyline, and the mindset was completely different. Mm -hmm. And I was, and I said to myself, I'm going to write a book about this one day because these girls are just like I, I went from seeing girls that were planning to have babies to girls that were planning to go to, to, go, to go to college. Yeah. So that's um, deep. Yeah, so that that's one thing. I actually had one of my friends; she was pregnant. You know, right when I was transferring, and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, um, and we were 15. And so I saw that, that that it was a big it was a pivotal moment for me and my mindset, even though I didn't end up going to school because I, I got right into the music industry right mm -hmm. after I graduated high school. I went to um, JC a little bit. But um, that was the that was the first moment that I can remember wanting to write this book. And I didn't have a title. But then my sister graduated college, Sac State, a few years ago, a couple years ago. And I was sitting in her apartment and I just I was so proud of her. And I and I knew and I know that she's like a product of the things that I would drill into her every day. And um, it just started to take shape then. Wow. Something that you said that was really interesting, um, I can relate to because when I was in high school, I went to my first high school that I went to I had a daycare in it. So mm -hmm. it kind of made it seem like this was okay. acceptable, acceptable, uh, mm -hmm. okay and acceptable. And then I'm, I moved to New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we went to a school that wasn't like that. Small town, one high school, one, mi one middle school. So it's like when you're making this book and thinking about the, these things, and as you're figuring out what shapes these women, women in life to have these self-doubts, mm -hmm. what factors are are shaping that like one environment for me like mm -hmm. what what else went into making these book and thinking about how can i address these things what factors went into that um mainly like i said my mistakes and, and my, the mistakes of others yeah um those those were the main fact i'm like oh my god like i see if i see you know a girl um, i'm a songwriter so i might be in the studio with a young songwriter i'm like right. <laughs> like, you don't even know. Like, girl. You have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> like, please don't. You tripping do that. now, Taylor Swift. Like, <laughs> wait right. till you turn 28. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so it was that kind of thing. Um, because everything is heightened in right. this business, everything is just too much. Right. And and I, I re it started off like, I'm, I'm like, oh, should I, should I gear it toward um, just, you know, girls in the entertainment industry? But, you know, hopefully because of. My accomplishments, a lot of songwriters and singers will be drawn to it. But really, it's some of the things that we go through in the studio or the things that girls are going through at work mm -hmm. or, at, or in college in their dorms, you know. And so it was just kind of like a, just a mixed bag of like, oh, God, okay, uh, and I'm going to write that down. <laughs> That's a note. Yeah. I'll tell you one deeper. I don't this <laughs> this is not some a lot of the things you say is just not applicable to women you know, aside from. The vulva and vagina <laughs> point in which you, <laughs> you guys might. need to know that too. <laughs> True. I mean, well, I mean, the way you framed it. I mean, yeah. if you pedophilic, I mean, yeah. But, <laughs> right. um, but the rest of it, especially um, the, in which I could only imagine, um, the long, heavy letter that you write mm -hmm. to Oprah. Yeah, and, I'm reading that right now. <laughs> um, the long, heavy letter that you write to Oprah. Um, the part that stuck out to me was the part where he says, and just writing it made you feel so much lighter. Mm -hmm. um, and it's then, already getting it for me every time I write. Right. So, which yeah. I also tie into what you talk about later. Another chapter is um, about f following your passion. You know, and grant, my grandma will say, do, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. Mm -hmm. And to me, which also ties into, I think later you mentioned about being in traffic. You know, it's not just the, the traffic that, you know, because I, I remember going just the difference in job sitting in traffic. The four or five wasn't as bad. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I was I couldn't wait to get to where I was going, mm -hmm. which meant I was probably usually on time to where I was going, mm -hmm. which it wasn't so bad because now it's just a great ordeal. Now you just kind of 
oh, I hope everybody's having as good a day as me. I wonder what you're doing. I wonder what you're doing. Yeah. And you can you can see. Um, but I do know for a fact that 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 targets a lot of things you say do target songwriters, but it just tar- it targets people in general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because even if you read any self help book um, or anything, just a lot of it is believing what it is um, you do. And I don't know if anybody's gonna watch the fight, but I'm watching. Um, I was watching Showtime. And they asked Conor McGregor, like, did you believe, like, did you see yourself here? And he's like, of course I saw myself here. He was like, if I didn't see myself here, I couldn't have been here. He was like, coming from where I came from, I said it and I knew where I was going to be. I saw myself here. There's no other way I'd be standing here, right here, if I never saw myself here. And from the moment that he had his last fight, you could almost track him. He immediately tracked down Mayweather. And, and that was even before the fight. Yeah. He was already putting out things for Mayweather. Because he, under, he understood what was going on. So I thought that was rather, I thought that part was rather neat. And mm-hmm. I would, uh, I wish you could release what was said. You know, some of the other things that Auntie, as you called her, said mm-hmm. to you in the mm-hmm. email, because I know it would be mm-hmm. vital to not just women, but mm-hmm. most of us. Um, well, I just, I don't know, because just because I've, I haven't talked to her about it, you know, I wouldn't want to like release her full email. I understood. But, <laughs> so maybe she needs to call me. <laughs> Um, well, just not the email, but the, but the okay. content. The content yeah. of of the, what she said. Um, I mean, it, it's the the gist of it is is pretty much there. It was just kind of like, and and like I said, the believing or just just to have. I felt like when I said God knew what I needed, mm-hmm. and I needed to, I needed a word from somebody in that on that night, mm-hmm. and for her just to and for it to come from someone who I respect so much mm-hmm. and who I had been wanting to hear from since I was a child, it was just it. it it was things that I've heard before, you know, but it was just like putting it in perspective. And sometimes you're not ready to hear some right. certain things. And I was ready that night. Um, and one of the things that that really struck me, and I did share it in the book, is is her saying that, you know, you, 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 you deserve this. Like, you deserve mm-hmm. to be better, to believe in yourself because, you know, you, you're here. Um, just the fact that I, that there was like I think it was like a hundred and something thousand emails. One hundred thirty one thousand. Yeah, you that I that I clicked on yours, and when I read that, I'm like, oh my god! Like that, I thought that was pr- that was like winning the lottery. It, and, and it's funny because when you when I read it, I, mm-hmm. I, I had the same oh my god feeling because mm-hmm. I think there's the age old question between fate, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and then you actually having the power to change what it is you do right. you know what I'm saying? and destiny. so to me there's it's not fate to write an email to get chosen like that's a lot of fate mm-hmm. to me fate determines whether you accidentally die coming down the street that day like you couldn't have avoided that path mm-hmm. but you reaching that's out wrong. but you reaching out to oprah because you know there's a lot you know there's a grave chance that she won't hit you back right you know what i'm saying that who you're not gonna because be the I had one done it a thousand times and she hadn't hit me back. right you're not gonna be one mm-hmm. of them but the fact that you kept doing it you know and so there's a um there's an einstein quote that uh uh it says um he says a coincidence is god's way of re- remaining anonymous oh, that's so true. so it's mm-hmm. like so you know her mm-hmm. seeing your email that's definitely a coincidence but mm-hmm. it's definitely like a spiritual thing you putting out good energy mm-hmm. and then that energy coming back uh, mm-hmm. To you, um, something that I want to talk to you about in the first chapter. I highlight the, the title. It says, um, "I I am beautiful from uh, the inside out." Mm-hmm. And so, um, like, why do you feel that um, that's something that's important to to talk to uh, black women about? Um, because social media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean. I can just I can we can scroll on any given page you know just down the whole uh, either Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whomever you know whatever, yeah. um, and people bank on beauty, mm-hmm. and that's not what is important. You know, it's not who, it's who you are on the inside is what makes you really beautiful mm-hmm. because there's a lot of girls and especially these days with filters and makeup and <laughs> and all kinds of stuff that make you perceive perceive that you're beautiful it's, but you're you know uh, kicking your sister down every chance you get you know tearing them down talking bad about themselves or about yourself or 
uh, putting yourself in a, in a position to where you're being disrespected. You don't you don't believe in you don't believe in yourself. You don't feel like you don't even know that you're beautiful, even though you might physically have all the attributes that make beauty. Yeah, you know, and I say that, that beauty is a long alert. Beauty is actually well, my human sexuality course in college I took. It was like human or. Uh, beauty is a learned behavior mm -hmm. so a lot of the repetition like you said in social media or just in the media in general is mm -hmm. put out that the standards of beauty um is ever changing and mm -hmm. but the thing is it's also something it's the repetition of seeing that especially like like you, you talk about plastic surgery mm -hmm. and um you know yeah the the proportions of women are just like this becoming so crazy a yeah. little bit this is crazy. crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but just, yeah. just to say everybody but at the same time people you know everybody wants to feel beautiful so if you if you have something that you want to make yourself that makes you personally feel beautiful is it like is it you feel like it's okay for them to i'm not here to judge anybody yeah. and whatever makes you feel beautiful if you want to get a weave if you want to wear your hair natural i'm i'm here for both i wear my hair both ways mm -hmm. um I, I, as far as like going under the knife that's just like a, a personal choice but i, I feel like if you're going to do it if you invest your in so much in those things you should invest as much on the inside you know mm -hmm. going to see a counselor reading you know um mm, and just book, huh? you know yeah <laughs> and just like believing in yourself like mm -hmm. the affirmations the mirror mantras are there because so many times we wake up we just pick up our phone we go to instagram we want to see what you know the the beautiful ones are doing mm -hmm. and and that's how we and 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 this um it it renders a lack of um of authenticity authenticity of creativity like you can't even be yourself because you're so you're trying to find out um how to get the kylie jenner lip kit or to get the uh the <laughs> well you might have the lips already yeah just saying, as a, no, no, especially no. as a black right woman, right saying, you're, you're, i mean but you know like there's these products that are being sold yeah, yeah. and pushed to us when that's not even it that's not even it when you get when when you feel like when you're going to be your most whole self it's gonna come from the inside. It's not from what you see in the mirror. Right. It's, it's right. what you feel. I've I've I felt uh, that I looked pretty, and I felt, and I was being abused. Mm -hmm. What? And I like, was abusive, uh, abusive marriage, ab abusive relationship. Like uh, physically, and physically, like mentally, emotionally, yeah. financially, mm -hmm. mentally, and so I mean, I think I, I was probably looking pretty, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't matter. It didn't translate. It didn't matter. Didn't, like the the person was making you feel like worthless or well this is the you? thing is like um i always like I, I hashtag believe become i have a tattooed on myself it's just like it's what i believe mm -hmm. that's my truth that good or bad you will become what you believe mm -hmm. and and it's also repetition you mm -hmm. know and it's also what you let into your spirit so if someone's telling you every day you ugly you you ain't mm -hmm. this you you ain't that you'll start to believe it if you elect that's why you have to be careful who you let into your space yeah. and so yeah I, I i believe that i was all those things that i was told like you ain't nothing you ain't talented you ain't this you ain't that mm -hmm. and i just because i allowed it into my space i believed it was it partly because you looking back was it maybe that he didn't have the um like he maybe to, it was out of his way of like keeping you under well, like from like excelling or that, going, you know that's a, one thing he needs to keep you at a certain level of course that's one thing and it's also you you are the things that we say to each other is how we really feel about ourselves so he was so insecure or they were so because it was two different people <laughs> i've gone through this um they were so insecure that they want to project their insecurities onto me mm -hmm. but you have to get yourself that's why beauty doesn't matter in that way you have to get yourself to the point where it doesn't matter what anybody says. This is what I believe about me. And mm -hmm. that's just where I am. And continuing to climb that way instead of like being so broken or so open to where anybody can just pour anything into my life. Like, I'm not open like that. It starts with self. It starts oh, yeah. with you. Oh, yeah. And that's the theme that I read throughout the experts of the book. And even what you said today is like, believe, believe, believe. You mm -hmm. have to believe in yourself in order to get where you want to be. Right. Yeah. So I think that's a very, sure. very important message. And I, I, and that's one of the, the first messages that you put into mm -hmm. your book. And then mm -hmm. it kind of trickles down throughout the rest of the excerpts that I read. But mm -hmm. it was definitely something that was reoccurring. Mm -hmm. So I feel like just you doing that, it's, it's just uh, 
shows that you have to do it often like like a mantra yeah. like, like you said yeah you can't just say okay i believe in myself today and not believe in yourself tomorrow right you have to keep believing in yourself right and i think that's how you people get ahead in life because of course people are going to tell you you can't you can't do something because they don't know you only mm -hmm. you know you mm -hmm. so that's right yeah I, I really did like that about about the excerpts thank you so i have a question <clears throat> I would like to know at which point you wrote this or thought about this or learned this life lesson before or after getting into the music industry. And I, I'm, well, I'm certain it was after, but if there was a particular incident, then let me know. So you have a chapter that says, um, um, back pocket wisdom, mm -hmm. look both ways before crossing. Mm -hmm. So chapter four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't even have, to, I didn't even have to read <laughs> into it, you know what I'm saying, after mm -hmm. figuring out that you um, did music, but just mm -hmm. look with both ways for crossing. Mm -hmm. Explain that to the people, and um, then let me know when you learn that, if there's a particular lesson attached to that. I mean, it's just kind of like, well, you know, obviously look both ways before, you know, know where you're going, like physically, you walk mm -hmm. down the street, look both ways, but also look both ways before you cross somebody, mm. you know? And that's in this business. Everybody is like crabs in the bucket. Everybody's mm -hmm. trying to. Fame is such a monster that everybody wants so badly. Friends, people who you think your friends are usually not. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's a lesson to answer your question. I probably learned that after maybe like the tenth time. After like the tenth person, I'm like, <laughs> oh, we so cool. This is my mm -hmm. friend. And in this business, it's just like, oh, well, we're not. We're not that. Oh, okay. So, we ain't even really that cool, you know? <laughs> There's a quote that um, I want to ask you about that I use to... I always love Colson. Quote Co man. Yeah, quote Courtney. <laughs> actually, I love this quote that I'm seeing throughout the book. It's the African proverb that says, yeah. when there is no enemy within, the enemy outside cannot I hurt, hurt you. you. And I see mm -hmm. that throughout the book. So that's a really great... It's an African proverb. Mm -hmm. But the quote that came from Ebro from How 97 says um, that the um, there's only two seasons in this game seasons when I need you and when you need me and so that's when I thought about when in uh, in the book like, because you said look both ways before you cross a person mm -hmm. and so I think that people that do cross you in this business or in general they, they kind of ride you off right they mm -hmm. might be hot in that moment or mm -hmm. whatever the case is and then there's a you know there's times where they are hot and you whatever you're over here cooking you know mm -hmm. and then and then you get hot and then it's just you know it's just this this constant like oh could you do this no nah, and then it's just like oh it, it, the tables turn all the right. time it just, tables it just always happens. turn yeah. but i but I, I do know that like what did you say sometimes there's a time seasons when you need me and when i need you it just if i need you right now and the tables turn i need you to play my i'm a radio station i need you need me to play my record mm-hmm and or play a record you got a hot you got a record you're promoting mm -hmm. and then i'm like no nah, i'm the hot radio station i'm the hot radio personality i don't i don't want to play a record right now i'm playing this other guy's record mm -hmm. and then the tables turn where you're drake or got a song with drake or something right. and i'm just like uh could you could yeah, i yeah, could yeah. you come in for an interview you want to hang out <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. no you weren't there when i was over here trying to yeah, get, grind it out that. so I, I just think that's one thing that people do cross people that I think they ride off to some degree and they don't understand like to me it's all about building bridges and mm -hmm. and not burning them in a sense and sometimes I feel like if you're willing to burn a bridge with a person or not not uh, value that relationship then you don't understand that it's a, it's a as you climb this ladder it gets smaller and smaller oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying um, uh, yeah, I just think that when you when you when you can be a resource for somebody else, that's when you've really grown. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the need, like if they if, who needs who, if you always make yourself open, like from this day on, I know you're from Oakland. If I see you, I don't care what's going on, like what you need. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm. I may not have it. I'm gonna try to help you get it because she might have it. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's all about the cycle of like giving and receiving. That's mm -hmm. that's my theory. It's not like if, but I do believe that you often see the same people coming up that you see, oh, you know, right, going down, or, you know, but you see them and you're like, oh man, oh, I, so you know, always yeah. respect, you know, yeah. but that's just like something you should do as, a, you know, you learn as a child that um, to respect people and to respect yourself. Yeah, well, interns, 
everybody. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly, respect exactly. to Ebro. Respect to Ebro because I, I do love watching Ebro. Mm-hmm. But I, that quote is whack. <laughs> Straight up, huh? Tell us how you right. <laughs> Let me tell you how I feel though, because I feel like saying that that there's there's two seasons. One when I need you and you need me. That means that's saying that in this industry, crossing each other or being shysty to each other is inevitable. Right. And I feel like that's the thinking Not that true. we need to cut out. Like that mm-hmm. doesn't have to be the case. How you said that you so. need to be a resource. You yeah. you are going to see the same people. And continuing that thought process is our problem right not just in our industry but just in as a as a culture it's mm-hmm. like oh well i might need her or she i don't need like it's just like yeah. why why we gotta act like that right like, and i think yeah. that's why and to i think it's the leverage thought. i think some people need you know they need that leverage and i i, I mean i agree that it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that way but i think the, the to me the all the flip side is is that there's and, and they say it in business. In business, and uh, there's no in business and politics. There's no permanent enemies. So that means that if it's money on the table, it don't matter if we didn't like each other. At some point, it's let's for figure, what, it's for whatever is best. Let's for let's figure out how to just like politics. With is there situations where there were people who didn't want to come to the table with Trump or or Obama when he was in office, and it's just like all right. This is going to help me, and it's going to help you. Even though we, at one point we weren't on the same uh, a same aisle at one point, and just the same thing with any person. If you want to, um, if you're doing something that can benefit me, if you said, if you said at one at one point we didn't get along, I'm not. I'm going to do things that are going to benefit me as a professional in the industry, regardless of if at one point you tweeted me and said something negative. Now, while there's truth to that, um, I must agree with Courtney. Courtney, I knew I knew that, but I was just <laughs> I was just trying to remember the face that she made when you said it, just to make sure that she was on the same page with you. Um, I'm a big Batman fan, and I, you know, when he said this about Batman, I kind of disagree too. Although there's truth to it, you know, and it's like you know, you either the hero for a long time and you live your, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, mm-hmm. and. Although why there's truth to that, which based, Batman was that? The Dark Knight, with the one with the Joker and Heath Ledger. And although there's truth to it, based on what you said via politics, because that is the case, and I'm an NFL fan, which is also the case. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know we love it when you up and then, you know you can be best friends and you know you're gonna be the franchise player forever, and then you have a bad season, and then now you scram. You know what I'm saying? You Kick play rocks. right. right. You play for the Giants all your life for now. They trade you to the Redskins. You like oh what the hell? You know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, hey. <laughs> um, if we run that in since it's a relationship so mm-hmm. if we run that parallel to relationships that is the problem you know what i'm saying like you know what i'm gonna date you because you know what i need a place to stay you know yeah. what i'm saying so or back then didn't want me now well, hot, they all all want me. Me. <laughs> right you know what like i'm saying Jones. and so it takes it takes the fact of being genuine out of everything right and we don't want that, you know what I'm saying? And we should operate around it. And if we could operate on a genuine premise, even if I was no good for you, I would be able to tell you I'm no good for you, no matter what good you or value you actually would have to me. Right. And that's the issue today um, with us and people or just with, in relationships in general. You know what I'm saying? If I know good and well, I'm not ever going to marry you. You know what I'm saying? I should not domesticate myself with you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And give you false help that this would be one day and i think that often happens with women but i think it's the other way around like i don't think it's intentful and i think they get, put themselves in predicaments where it's like you know what i like him he's a bad dude he's a bad boy you know what i'm saying i'm going to change him you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i need that fame you know what i'm saying i need that look that eye you know what that he's with me i pulled him everybody sees me i get their attention and then when he become he's who he's always been it's like well you know i need you to do better well and he's you know he's like well i mean i've never actually been better you know what i'm saying this is all i've ever been you know what i'm saying but while she garnered the attention and everybody loved her because oh look you was with the guy that everybody wanted and now that he's acting and ass and being who he actually has always been you want him to change it's like well okay look when you needed me you know what i'm saying and like and that sucks as opposed to Liking somebody for genuinely who they are and who they always would be if they never changed. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of us don't. I think that's important to follow your passion because it doesn't matter what changes over life are doing. You always do that. Like, as a, I'm a musician. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, musicians chase that their entire life. They'll do that their entire life. And it's I'm okay whether I make it. 
or whether I don't. As someone who makes music, you got to be okay whether you make it or you don't. And especially someone who dates someone who makes music, you have to love them regardless to whether they make it or they don't because right. they may never make it. And if you bank on that, even if you know that they're talented, if you bank on that, you'll never really be happy if, if it never comes to fruition. And then even if it does... You know what I'm saying? It's still not as genuine as it's made out to be. Right. So, I think operating in integrity is just key. And so that's, I mean, like, if you need me, I need you, whatever, I don't know. But what I do know is that if you are righteous, you have a better chance of being happy and being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. If you operate um, in, in integrity, it's just, that's just paramount for me. You know, I don't, if, if, what I need, I'm going to get it from myself. I'm going to get it from God. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, <laughs> we're talking about that thing. We are here with uh, Tora Stinson and our lovely sitting guest, um, Courtney. What's your last name? Neil. Neil. What do you go by, Courtney? Courtney Neal. Courtney Neal. Courtney Neal. Uh, okay. Courtney Lynn. Courtney Kennedy. I have a couple names. <laughs> <laughs> it went from just Courtney Neal to <laughs> Courtney Lynn to <laughs> Courtney Kennedy. You know, whichever one. All of it. <laughs> ZK. Mm -hmm. But we're about to take a commercial break in just a second. We're talking about that thing. That thing is something that every black woman should know. A hundred things of them, actually. Poet is cue us up. Yeah. Back on the bully when cats used to harmonize like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Back. Yo, yo. I wish I would have got her name. She <laughs> called in. She had a question. <laughs> she ain't called back. Wherever you, whoever you are, young lady, text us, tweet us, or call back in. Me? You might. Uh, remove them? No, keep them away. Oh. So. Away. So, this is Love Sessions, and um, we are back. And so, since this is Love Sessions, I would like to have your expertise. Um, um, so, I would like for you to give me something, one of maybe a hundred things that you think um, every black woman should know. One something about relationships. Trust your gut. Um, just in general, women and, 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 you know, people in general should trust their gut. I think that going back to Oprah, one of the things that she said to me in a letter that I don't think I shared was a, was like the things that I was saying to her. She was like, it didn't come out of where, nowhere. You knew. You knew what was going on. Like, what are you talking about? And this is like, I just had a conversation with a friend the other day. I'm like, I, hey, I'm so sorry to say this, but you know what's going on. You saw this number come up in the middle of the night. What do you mean you wonder who she is? You know what's going on. Like we, we we're so optimistic and we want love so badly, but what we chase will run from us. So mm. you have to be still and know who you are. What you chase will run from you. Courtney, I wanna hear what your perspective is. Well, I feel like I'm still learning my lessons in love. Like I feel like I haven't really had that great love where I walked away feeling like Yo, like that that was a lesson there you know I, I made my mistakes um but i think that's something that i've uh, not that you say that that's something i have been through where the signs are there mm -hmm. it's right in front of you but now i find myself making excuses for what what's blatant in front of my eyes and mm -hmm. i don't i don't really know why i did that and even looking back i still don't have an answer was it because i thought i loved him so much no i mean i mean yeah that's what i thought at first but then looking back i'm like mm, it, Maybe it was the desire to want it to work so bad mm -hmm. that um, I was blind to clear clear stuff. But you, so when you say signs, or do you ever feel like you have any like real solid evidence, or was it just always just like like signs of that you was? Oh no, I went through flags. the phone. Yeah, and I, I found the evidence. Well, <laughs> they say um, you shouldn't do that. Call. I know. Yeah. <laughs> If you look for something, you're going to find it. That, that, right? If it's not there, you can't find it. Yeah. No, nah, so, it's always going to be something there. I don't they would, if, you, if you go through, if a dude went to your phone right now that you're in a committed relationship with, he's going to find something. You can find agree. something. I don't, you want to go through my phone? I don't agree no, with that. You're going to find something. <laughs> I don't know it applies. You gotta, I, no, I it always applies. He's got to be your significant other. I, I think there's that gonna be you can something. put yourself in that position, but I think that that's just something. There's so many things that we get used to saying to each other. Right. That's just something we say. That's not true. 
There. If you look for something that's not there, you will not find it. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 hold on, hold on. I believe, I believe you, and then I disagree, and then I, I, I agree with him, and I believe you. Like, I, is there, is there, can you find, what I'm saying is, is so, there, is, when I say something, there doesn't always have to be this concrete evidence. There just is like, hey, what remember remember we talked about that because you were like because there was okay a, there was so, a, and see i wasn't even i wasn't even with you there but okay, okay but there so, was this, it's like oh why did he say hey why did he use <laughs> right. why did he use this emoji why what why did he text back to back i don't know you know what i'm saying so, i could so, find something so to his <laughs> to his <laughs> point to his point as, as to why you shouldn't go through someone's phone is because, like I said, I've been there, you know what I'm saying, where, it, it, hey, he said hi, and I couldn't figure out why he used a capital letter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why did he use a cat? Like, <laughs> what is explanation it? explanation point. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, what's so special about this hi? So, There's a car. So on the flip side, the reason why I say you shouldn't, because, one, if she's not doing nothing and nothing's there, that's why I'm tripping off the letter H in the capital hi. Mm-hmm. Because I'm insecure at that point about something right. that's going on for whatever reason. Right. Doesn't mean that I'm doing something, but it also means that I don't trust her, which right. is another. You're in a bad. You're in a bad right. zone. The yes. Point, the point of the finger is usually um, because there's something. When you point a finger, it's three pointing back at you, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like I think Six. sometimes Six. it could be you know just insecurity, mm-hmm. or sometimes it's because the other person is actually doing something. But I, but like I, I don't feel that people should look through each other's phones. I think just as a matter of personal privacy. Yeah. Right. It's just like not cool. But I understand. You know, I understand. And, oh, I'm not going to do it again. I have said, hey, <laughs> yeah. show me, you know, right. I've done that before. But now I'm just at the point where pff, I feel like if if you ask God, you ask the universe to show you, you will get shown. I have, you know, I, I've, I've seen things where I'm like, Ugh, really, did I just, just, I just asked yesterday, did you have to show me today? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's now tomorrow, you know. Right. So, um, but I, I, you know, I don't, I do, back to my point, I don't believe that, like, if you're a good guy. And you could even say, "Hey, she's it's a capital H." I don't know why. Like, I'm sorry, but you gonna have, you can't we can't do this. Yeah. You know, but I, I don't think that if there's tr- if there's trouble, you'll find it. Right. But if there's no trouble, it's, it's now I've learned it. that there are a lot of things that are defensible. Uh, let's go to the call thing. Caller. No. no. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that are defensible. So me, as a person who throws a lot of parties, um, a DJ. Whatever I mean, always with dealing with people. You know what I'm saying? There, I openly tell the person that I'm dating, there are women in my phone. So if you go through my phone on any given day, you will see a different name that's in my phone mm-hmm. for any different reason. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Could it be a catch-up text to someone to brand new business. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's never going to be steady. You will see a steady set of people because those are people that I rock with. Mm-hmm. But it could always be something new. Now, I'm the person I don't really care. Like, I don't have a password on my phone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, mm-hmm. but it's because to me, everything is defendable. Now, I understand there's a lot of things that can be that you will take offense to, mm-hmm. but I don't have a problem with explaining anything. And that's healthy. You know, to that point. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that it's healthy because to a certain extent, it, to again, it just, it, it, it allows the mind to wonder. Like, I don't follow people that I date on social media. Like, I just don't. I don't go look on their page unless they tell me to go directly look at something. I just don't. There's too many relationships in the past that I have no clue about. It could be somebody that you slept with that looks like a, a regular good friend. And then you and I'm I'm totally fine with him. And then you be like, I slept with him. And then and now I think bad of everything that ever happened. And had you not told me that, you know, what I'm saying I would I had no bias before that. So and to, and, and, and to me, I would say to your point, I would just say. My rule is, and I have it that way because I feel like when you, when you, once you step into the realm of, I need to, I feel like as a person, man, woman, or whatever, if you say I need to look through this phone, you should just terminate the relationship down there. That's how I feel. Like That's- I just feel like you're in a, you're just getting a confirmation of what all the evidence that you already had, the actions, mm-hmm. the broken promises, or whatever, the half truths, the gray areas. The, all that stuff you're gonna you're in that realm and then now the phone thing is like who is this 
Be, or you, know you don't find something and now trust right. is gone from right. both sides. Now I don't trust you because the, I already didn't trust you because I'm looking through your phone. Now you don't trust me because I went through your phone. So now well, unless, just, are, unless are, you don't know the guy doesn't know that you went through the phone. Right? Yeah, but I mean so everything, on low. everything. That won't last nah. long. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, because answers are gonna be needed. But yeah, see, right. and, and to me, in my in my adult mm-hmm. self now, it's only been like three or four years. Because <laughs> um, I'm 32, I know I didn't look it, but. So, and after you're 30, you become adult. But in my in my adult years, um, I've come to, and me and my friend were just talking about this, an explanation means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. So, to the point of, to where I I don't have, although I don't look, I don't look through people's phone, you can be driven to do anything. You know what I'm saying? And so now, if I had to or if I did, um, because I've, I have done that recently, so let me not tell that lie. So, uh, not recently, but I've done it. You know what I'm saying? In my adult years, let me say that. Mm-hmm. I've done it. It didn't, even though what I saw may have been, I felt was incriminating, I'm always down for an explanation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So explain this to me, because I am a different character. So something, I feel like a lot of people hide things that they, is either cliche bad, you know, you know that, that that has to deal with the social status. And to me, I understand that. So if you have a lot of male friends, you may hide a lot of your male friends. You know what I'm saying? That are close hitting you up, maybe on that. And, and then, so you, now you start acting suspect. You got good reason to because for most people you should they wouldn't be okay with your male friends. So for now, if I see through your phone that you talking on all this cat, but there's nothing legit and I and I then I can ask you like, why is this the reason why you've been tripping? Well, you know, he asked me out for dinner and well, well go Actually, if that's yeah. how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Nah. As long as you talk to me, nope. then that's fine. Because I'm not the norm, but I think everybody is a person to person basis. And I think we get caught up in what's going on in society. Um, about why people do certain things. We talked about ghosting a long time ago. And the funny thing was I had somebody uh, hit me up just randomly like two weeks after the episode that I had no clue even watched the show. Like, hey, man, when y'all was talking about ghosting, like, man, I do that all the time, and I had no clue that it was a bad thing to do. Mm-hmm. What's, you know what I'm saying? what's ghosting? Just when you just leave. Like, if so I just walked off the some, set and didn't say nothing to you oh, right now. Somebody, oh, okay, okay. And y'all corresponding, y'all might have hooked up, y'all might be dating or think you're dating, and next thing you know, the person just stops responding to your well, that's communications and right, it's but possibly he he thought it was the best nothing. way to do things yeah. just because he was upset or he not even upset but he was just done with the relationship and mm-hmm. he was like I had no clue that that was a bad thing to do you know what I'm saying like I didn't know that so he went back and then you know tried to mend those fences and fences to those that he remembered or at least the most recent. And he's like, man, I didn't even know. Because he really didn't want to genuinely hurt anybody. But to the point on that show was he was one of the people that just didn't want to face that tragic end and thought it would be worse. Mm -hmm. So how many times does that happen where we apply rules from other relationships to different people and it never would have been an issue at all had we just spoke about something? Right. So. Sometimes it can he- it sometimes it can help and other mo- more times than not. Could I, it, uh, it could hurt. Go ahead. Can I ask a question? So I got a question. This is from my Pinterest account, and uh, I just wanted to see um, what you thought about this. Don't and tell me says, a lot about your Pinterest. Mm, oh yeah, I got a zillion different <laughs> things in there. But um, let's see. If a man expects a woman to be an angel in his life, he must first create. He must first create heaven for her. Angels don't live in hell. Um, I create my own heaven. Okay. I think when you when you put it on a man to create your environment, then he's in control. Mm-hmm. And it, how is it your life if you're not in control of your own life? You can never be happy if, if someone is con- in control of your destiny. You're in control. I, I don't think I don't agree with that. And I didn't either. I'm just glad she said it. But <laughs> I, but I hardly agree with him. So it's nothing new. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think he agrees with me more than he likes to admit. True, cause but I, exactly. a, a, a lot of things that just some fundamental things, you know, and and for for the longest, you know, on this show, especially when it comes to social media, like I've always said, like my issue, my primary issue with a lot of women is the fact that they chase men for security, and I'm like. Right. I should never, I, I said, as long as I don't take away from anything you do, your money, your happiness, your pride, and, and all I'm doing is adding to, nothing I should do, as long as I'm not affecting your security, you shouldn't look to me for security. And I think that's the issue with a lot of, so even in that, like, it sounds good, I mean, because 
that's another way to dress no okay well, and i do firmly believe that you should be what you attract so mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so if you looking for a good person then you should be a good yeah. person right. you know yeah. what i'm saying so to that extent you know i agree but yeah. to her point yeah you give I, kinda, okay, go ahead. I took it a little differently though i took it as like Treat me how I deserve to be treated. Not necessarily create the environment around me where I ha- I'm living in heaven or buy me all these material things, or but just like, like, like you said, put that out, put that positivity out, and get that back. Like treat me right, and then I I can be right to you. I'm not gonna be uh, an angel for somebody who treats me like the bottom of. But you should be an angel regardless. You know what I'm saying? But I, but it's even like the little extra extra mile. Just even the little. It's just like. Like I don't want to, like, I don't want to be friends with somebody who treats me bad. So even just on outside of a relationship thing, it's just a person to person. It's just like cre- create a good energy and a good environment around yourself, and then you'll attract. Like you said, attract it back to you. I just I didn't I didn't take it as oh well I need a man to to make make my life heaven. I just need like it would mm-hmm. it's more so I would like a man to put the effort forth to make me feel good. It's not a need. Maybe it's a difference between necessity and 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 want. Well, let me put it to you like this. Let's just take it from an infrastructure point of view. If if your man, if that man or you keep coming across men who don't build heaven, you won't ever deal with them because you're an angel because you are already living in heaven. You've built your own heaven. So, if what she's ta- if she what she said is to is to be true, believe and become, and you've believed that you're an angel and you've become an angel, that means you only attract angels. It don't when that angel becomes a devil, it won't matter because now you will leave the world because you provide your own heaven. You already in heaven. You know what I'm saying? Like before you even cross this man that could be heaven, it doesn't matter one way or the other. If he's not He's just X out from your picture. He's just 86 and he's gone. Well, that, that, that's, that's saying the fact that every guy that comes into your life is going to be an automatically good dude. You might attract, you're going to attract good dudes, but you're also going to attract the bad ones too. Right, but it's about it's about your criteria and what it is you want from life. It, it's not a, you're, t- you're right, you're going to attract different people, but what you allow and what goes on and how you, because to again, like there's never been more truth to, Look who's around you, and it'll tell you who you are, mm-hmm. or at least where you aspire to be. Right. You know, and just even just recently, uh, I had an interview for a radio um, for uh, Clear Lake Studios, and so just going in there, it made me realize how far from music I had been, and I wonder why I could never, why I hadn't gone further and look because that's not what I'm surrounded by. Surrounded by. So if I want to go play a gig, and somebody else says, you know what, playing a gig is stupid, and I don't go, now guess what? I never get to that gig. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's stupid it's nothing of value but if that's what's value to me i need to be around all the people who support going to play the, and then they'll come and you know do, be, do such a thing so if it's about you just you need to learn how to weed out what's what and what's not and it's cool if you find somebody that's not an angel you know what i'm saying because you can see potential all the potential in somebody in the world that you you know what they can they not an angel but they got the potential to be. But for me, potential just stands for ain't done shit yet. So if you figure out that they ain't, that, you know, you get in, they ain't be- became an angel and they're not going to be an angel and it starts to wear on you. Now, as long as they don't wear on you, you can deal with them all you want to. As long as they don't take you from being an angel. But the minute it stops you from being an angel, then that's when it should be done. Can I, can I jump in real quick? Because uh, chap- it kind of pertains to chapter 8, which talks about, which is a Nina Simone quote I see, and it's... Um, you have to learn. You have to learn how to get up from from the table when love is no longer being served. Which I love that. Love Nina Simone. Shout out to her. Mm-hmm. She's just, she's an amazing artist. But yeah. this is um this this quote. You know, kind of. It's not. It's, it's it seems like you could apply that to a lot of areas yeah. in, in life. But what um what inspired this this particular chapter? Um, well, I just wanted to highlight some some of the people that inspire me, and Nina Simone is definitely one. Um, and so I just like took quotes from from different women, from Oprah, Nina, uh, Maya Angelou, um, and it, but that quote in particular, like you said, it, it, it is applicable to all kinds of things. From because love is what for me what guides us all. So if you if you if you're in your job. And the love is no longer being served. Mm-hmm. You might want to go get a new job. Uh, obviously, in Amen. a relationship, you you got to go get a new. You got to go even. You don't have to go get a new man, <laughs> but you can get up <laughs> so that you can make yourself open for the person. Because people do change. 
they you do. know, um, contrary sometimes. to popular belief. I don't know. Sometimes. sometimes. But but a lot like, of times, people change. Yeah. Oftentimes. The majority of th- 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 Just if think you, about your... If you know, with your ex, I evolving promise Evolving and changing is two different things. Though. Oh, it is? What is? Like, I don't know. What's the difference? I mean, you can evolve into being a better person. And, mm-hmm. like, so you used to, like, just sit around and gossip with somebody, you know, all weekend. And then you and I might do that. And then you see me two years later. And I've been, like, you know, just, like doing the the opposite of that and so I've, that's been my common practice every day I'm going to be a little different to you mm-hmm. we may not even like connect no more no, you change yeah nah. <laughs> that's a positive yeah. change that's an evolution <laughs> yeah. um, but then sometimes people just like get brand new you know and or sometimes people they will let their experiences and their and the things that have hurt them change them to be bitter mm-hmm. and then they're carrying that around with them and then it makes your sweetness bitter you know, because I always feel like if you ever got back, if you ever break up with somebody. I I've experienced this. Too. I don't believe ever, that either. I'm saying you ever break up with somebody. It's true. I promise I you, 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 you will probably break up with them for the same exact reason that you broke up with them the first time. Even ten years later, you'll be like, yo. I I broke up with you. You know, this didn't work last time because of this reason, and it ain't working this time because of the same as that reason. And that's but that yeah. takes clear eyes and mm-hmm. understanding of self before you get back. Like to again, I DJ a lot of weddings, and the majority of those weddings with the people that are plus thirty five, especially forty, they're with people that they were with previously, and the in in between that they've had kids, they've had. Uh, other fiancés and when you listen to the stories it's like how do you get here you know this kid's light skin she's white but you black you know what i'm saying like you know you'd be like how did you get here you know what i'm saying it's just it's growth you know what i'm saying and i get that when we talk about evolution and change you know a bud is a rose you know what i'm saying but it's going to evolve and you when it changes it's still a rose, you know what I'm saying? A rose is still a rose, you know what I'm saying? But it just depends on what stage you met it in. So if you was looking for a rose when you got the bud, you know what I'm saying, then and you want a rose, if you well, if the rose is available once you go to pick it, then that's fine. You know what I'm saying? But if it's still in the growing stages and becoming a rose, you know what I'm saying, and it's not a rose yet and you find it in between that point, then you, you still won't be a fit until it becomes a rose. Mm-hmm. And then it and, and then when you get back to going back to certain people you have to know the exact reason why there was split. And then if that change happens naturally and then there's still chemistry there, then that's fine. But a lot of times, to again, we operate on such cliches. I mean, don't, and you, don't get me wrong, there's truth to it. But I just, that's, that's another one I just don't necessarily agree with because you have to look at yourself. Like you talk about all the time, like you are not who you were years ago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you're better for that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So if somebody saw you before as you like to say your glow up and now they want you you know what i'm saying it's like should they not you know what i'm saying but they should because you're everything you said you was going to be you know what i'm saying and you're everything different from what you were you're probably the man that they thought you were going to be well they I don't know. if not i'm say, saying if not better you know what i'm saying but they didn't have the patience to deal with it a lot of people yeah. can't can't deal with the journey you know what i'm saying they're looking for they want the, the finished product they want the finished product i wanted to ask you um you mentioned something uh earlier about uh financial financial abuse and i just want to see that's something that maybe people don't talk about a lot and how was that something that affected your relationship like what is financial abuse um, look like how can I say this especially about? relationship bias um, but I'll, I'll use a friend as an example um, I have a friend who had this she was dating this guy and she would just like what she she wasn't sure like why her, how her money was disappearing mm-hmm. and she so like, this is shared accounts no, they didn't, she, man. She would go, we would call this guy ATM blank, whatever his his name was, mm-hmm. um, because <laughs> <laughs> she go to sleep and he would literally get into her car. But you you're setting yourself up for that first of all when you're dating someone who needs to use your car. Mm. Um, yes. and sometimes that's okay. Somebody's in school and you you holding someone down, but when somebody's just clearly not caring about their life, why would they care about yours? Like Jody. Yeah, <laughs> right, <ambition>. exactly. <laughs> he had ambition. <laughs> he was selling clothes. It was low, but he had it. <laughs> um, but he would literally go to her bank account at least three nights a week and just take out money. And he mm. was just stacking it. 
and then she realized like hey you know i'm not I'm sleeping at these during these hours. This is my bank. Go to her bank, and they have pictures of him just like there, taking the money out. Oh, mm. um, for me personally, it was more so like because I, I got my start in the music industry when I was younger. Um, I had I had a lot more money than the average person my age, but you know, so and I wasn't fully developed, you know, like mentally and emotionally. Mm -hmm. So I'm all, and I'm also a giving person. So I'm always like, oh, okay, you know, no. I got this, I got this, and then it got became to a point where, wait a minute, like, you haven't you haven't paid anything, mm. and then it translated into like, then you get into a relationship. It's like, wait, a are minute. you like living together at that point? Um, later on, yeah, mm. and then like, okay, you're just not gonna work. And then finally, when this person got a chance to to really get a get a, a good position, you know, then he just lost it. You know, it was a it was worse. You know, I'm not going to give him that much time here. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, it's that of just like no, just point. Make sure you know what a person's motive is. L make sure you know what their goals are. When they do, they have do, can they pay for if they if you're paying for dinner all the time, mm -hmm. that's not a good sign. What about the guy? Because as, as guys mostly pay for, stuff, I, I agree with right? that. I think that if there's if there's a girl who's just like not willing to pay her own, then you have to look at that. Mm -hmm. Some people, some guys like to take care of girls. To be honest, you mm -hmm. know, I know like my father is a kind of person like, oh no no no, you know, I'm yeah. not like he'll be yeah. offended if yeah, you want yeah. to like pay for dinner or but, something. But that still know, has nothing to do with ambition, right? Yeah. And it doesn't have to do with the reach. Do you do the reach, uh, Courtney? Be like, oh, the bill comes. <laughs> And then you just be like, oh, all right, right. you got it. You know, like, do you, or that do you that just awkward like, moment when you try to figure out. Yeah, or do right, you just right. be like, this this dude better pay for that this dinner. That was last night. Yeah, that was that was. Yeah. That was so. And she kind of re and dude was like kind of called her out because he's like, I'm, you know, you kind of did a little fake reach, you know, yeah. what I'm saying, kind of thing. And I, I mean, I always I've said this, but I do appreciate the thought, the, the thought that. I just, um, you know, being from Oakland, I'm sure you heard this. It's all on the bitch. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, it's all on the bitch. That's, that's like, that's the Oakland thing. I don't know. But never it's just, it. yeah, never heard it. But it's like, <laughs> it's that player mentality where, Definitely. you know, where you got this, where you're, um, I'm like looking at myself, I'm like frozen for a second. <laughs> I'm not frozen on the thing. But, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, being all on the bitch means that it's a player mentality where we popping our collars and we going out. And whatever we doing, we at the side. We we in Vegas. So we doing this high side life, but I'm not paying a dime because I'm right. such a pimp player, or whatever, right? And so, all that to say, sometime when I'm out or when I was dating and a woman, you go out and you sit down and the check comes. We after a nice evening of us just sharing each other's company. And I guess the you know in this society that we're in, the right thing to do is to pay. But it's also kind of like a gesture of like reaching the arm. Oh, how much was the bill? Can I pay it? Can I can I pay the tip? Or just some kind of uh, thought processes to acknowledge the fact that we don't we're, have to. We are we're adults mm -hmm. here. We're there's a bill that's here, and every time you know, and then it's like. Maybe we go deeper when we start actually getting more serious. You know what I'm saying? You I know, think you have to adjust, like, like assess the the environment. The, like, if I'm go, if you ask me out on a date, mm -hmm. and, and this is clearly a date, mm -hmm. then yeah, I am kind of expecting you to take the tip or take take the the check because you and like it, it's a date, like it's a real real live date. And if you are, general, but, but I'm not gonna awkwardly reach. I am one of the ones who like. I'll pull my wallet out and I'll finagle with it a little bit and you be like, oh no, I got it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh. You're like, yes. <laughs> so you got you got you a new reach going on. Yeah, my, my so reach is more reaching, low key. You're, you're yeah, reaching you ain't gonna be caught yeah. now. You ain't gonna be caught in that little half Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my card out, my wallet out, and I'll have I'll have it ready so you know that I'm willing. So you nah. can't. So you you then that's the thing too, because you're like, and I think it's uh, two can play that game. Uh, yeah. with, I think it's LAO or something. But it's like you go into a date. Where you can pay for your meal. Oh yeah, right? I'm never gonna go anywhere where I'm not gonna be able to pay for myself. Cause yeah. I don't, if I don't know you that well, and you might get up and run, I'm not be sticking, <laughs> looking crazy. Like if, if you out of here, you know what yeah. I mean? I don't want to be that person that yeah. oh well, I gotta go clean dishes in the back, and you out <laughs> on the 405 somewhere. Yeah. Like 
that's not cool. Well, at least that's good. You know, yeah, at least you, at least you can if you ever put in that position. But let me tell you a story. Um, one time, I'm asked out. Some she calls me, say, "Hey, I want to go eat." Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm busy right now. I don't really have that much time. Mm-hmm. Like, It'll be quick. It's just I need to talk to you someone. I need you know just just I just let's go eat real quick. I'm not really hungry. You know what I'm saying? Not totally. I'm not really hungry. But I mean, if you want to eat, go ahead. You can eat. So we go to the spot, new spot, never been there. I tasted her food. I didn't even like it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I ain't get a pan for that meal, you know what I'm saying? Not because I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Just when it came, when it, I ended up realizing that she ended up giving me the bill and just out of natural habit, I paid it. And I, and I, I didn't think about it until I got in the car and I'm like, hold on. Like, <laughs> I ain't even eat, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, and this, and, and I know yeah, this is a well, tale. Half the time, the server puts the bill on the man's side. Right, so, and, and I, I get that, but this is not just a tale for me that I that just have my, like, a lot of the homies like dang you know what i'm saying like she asked me to go eat so i get what you're saying because if he asked then he should be in that position but that's also a two-way street where if he asks he should pay and then it seems like nowadays if she asks she well, expects you to pay when i, when I say assess the situation it's not asking is one thing but if, if this if like we've been texting or talking on the phone or something like that and it's clear that it's a date it's not too it's not like oh you want to grab lunch real quick like you know if charles and i are in the office and i asked him to go grab lunch I'm not gonna pay for it. I mean, I'm, you know <laughs> what I mean. I don't expect him to pay for my food. You know what I mean? It's, it's the, it's the general the relationship. Setup. Yeah, it's just like you, you know, don't we not, we're not gonna play stupid and, and know that if like as as a, like you know some girls will. I'm about to say. Some, you, let me correct that. Some girls will play <laughs> stupid and be like, uh, you know. <laughs> here goes, a, here goes, here goes some that I experienced and it was like. I felt like I was being like I was on a this is back in the day I was dating I went on a date an actual date but it was with a producer I'm a PA at the time the one was a producer and I was like uh, you know we go out we go out for drinks right so we're at a bar and mind you we're like somewhere in West Hollywood it's like 12 14 dollars a drink I'm a PA at the time so I know I only got so much money to spend so I'm like all right after like two glasses of wine or something Cause I'm already thinking in my mind, I'm gonna pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Even though I know our money is probably different, um, I uh, the guy comes back around like you guys want another round. I'm like, nah, we're good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I always think back like, and she was kind of like gesturing like, you know, like I have another one out. But in my <laughs> mind, I'm already calculating. I already, you know, I only got so much Safe money measures. to spend. So in that scenario, I want to avoid. The whole bill, awkward. Sp- awkward bill splitting scenario. So I was trying to preemptive strike it, but at the <laughs> same time, I I think that kind of also looks weird too as a dude when you're like tape, you know, like we're good kind of thing. Like I don't know how how right. do you how do you address that when you're like trying to date within your means too? You know what I'm saying? Without it being weird or awkward. You gotta know about the good happy hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> or don't go. Yeah, right. be like, go this somewhere. ain't a good spot. Like, Probably look at the menu. Yeah, well, that's pregame. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We control that. Free so, strikes. Um, speaking of insecure, because we were talking about that, and then um, because what happens a lot during insecure. Um, question yourself. So it's one of the topics that you tell them. Question yourself. And in Insecure, this woman is always talking to herself. Now, the reason why I love Insecure time and time again, that and Mary, being Mary Jane, is because I think it gives perspective to men that we also, we didn't understand before. You know what I'm saying? It's, especially if you watch it from a certain point of view. Um, so off top, women are a bit crazy. You know what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with us. It's not a bad crazy. Oh, it's just a. Don't go there. It's just, it's a back and forth. You guys have that men don't have in depth. We have a back and forth, but you guys back and forth is kind of like we'll raise a question and then solve it out loud. Try to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So in insecure, she'll be thinking something and create a whole storyline behind it, and it won't even be the case. So. The last episode that I that I remember seeing that what she does that what she does this is when they go I think maybe it was the kissing grind or whatever they, they they went somewhere they went out and mind you she did oh boy dirty you know what I'm saying when she left him the first time and she's thinking that it's gonna be an issue now the funny thing was I thought it was generally gonna be an issue the way she brought it up and was like girl let me go handle this real quick you know what I'm saying like 
because it was the first episode I had saw back. So I thought something had happened in between the last time I saw the show in with him on the show. Girl, let me go handle this and whatever. So she gets there and he ain't even tripping. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And she's like really virtually about to make something be an issue, but too bad. He just really was just like, well, because he, she's all in her head, basically. But she's all in her so, head. So, so to he, my, he's in his. Okay, go ahead. So, to my point, the conversation with yourself. Now, this is either blind eyes or fooling yourself. How do you navigate these things and decipher between two? If you're a woman, because I'm sure you've been there. Well, first of all, she's a character. <laughs> well, these are realistic scenarios. I mean, I mean, I don't. I mean, first of all. For me, I don't generalize. So to say all <laughs> women are crazy. Yeah, just, that was a uh, bad a start much. to the whole thing, bro. Um, but it was a headline. Yeah, um, I, we have. I mean, like I think it's just like it depends on the person. You know, some I have friends who are like guys. It, and you know what they say guys are. I don't know because I again I don't want to generalize. But right. I have friends who like operate like guys, mm -hmm. and then I have friends who. Um, who who have that back and forth with themselves or sometimes will bounce it off of each other. But for the most part, um, when it comes to... You, you, your question is about rationalizing, like, what's going on. The, in, the, I'm sorry. How do you... Because we, we talked about instinct before. You know what mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, you know, like, you talked about how... And making it, up stories. But, but mm -hmm. well, here's the thing. A lot of women say that they're intuitive, right? And so, not, and hold on, a lot of women are intuitive. Right. But sometimes um, it's not something that you surmise as opposed to something that you may assume or that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So, case in point, before being Mary Jane, before Insecure, there's a lot of things I knew, okay. but there's not a lot of things I didn't, underst I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So now when I see a woman going through that, like when it happens in real life and I'm mm -hmm. like, where did you get that from? Now I don't even trip. Like, I know where you got it from. It okay. was you. You know what I'm saying? So like now I'm not mad. Stories. Right. I'm not as mad because I understand <laughs> that it's a part of the process as a woman. Right. And sometimes they can't control it. Now, before being Mary Jane and Insecure, some of that stuff would send you up a wall. And it's like, I, 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 kid, I kid you not. Men really believe, they'd be like, there is no way you thought that way by yourself. Some... The, there. So is it safe for us to say that you guys like go through people's women's uh, like Lawrence was looking at the yes. other guy. You guys do that. Yes. Oh, OK. I didn't know. See, do I was thinking about to call you out. Do what? Um, like he went on to the other guy that she cheated on him with. And he to was his page. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you guys do that. Okay. Yes. Um, See, I, I, don't I didn't think know it's that. Just guys. I think people do. Right. That. And that's yeah. my point. Like we all concoct stories like you can. He he looked at that and he's like, so what's going on? I, was she messing with him the whole time? Like, yeah, you know, I mean, but that was a fair The thing is like that's a fair assessment. That's it was. A, yeah. He was like, she she was lying and being uh, sneaky. And then and, and, and that and, and that and came then, based off of a factual event. Now he may yeah. it, he may have taken it too far, but that's usually how it happens. I mean, so if somebody if you if trust I, is broken, right? Right. Yeah. If you, the trust is broken, she looks through your phone, she sees something, you guys get back on a good path, and then two months later, your phone rings at two in the morning. You're like, okay, who was that? And this time it could be it's your a bill mother, collector, or you know, this time it could be an emergency, or it Check could be State Farm. just somebody it's or your, your friend, your platonic <laughs> friend. But because you've already had that girl who's called at two o'clock in the morning. And you're like, okay, who was that? So and so? Mm -hmm. Of course, that's human nature. Well, I, I, I want to make it even lighter. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I know a lot of times when people mistrust is because of something that they saw. And then sometimes, actually, it's not. It's really based on the perception. It's almost like getting with a guy that is, you know, out there and then he tells you he's all about you. And then you lose him because you figured out, well, he was all about me, but I didn't want to believe it. But I want to take something mm -hmm. a little, I want to take something a little lighter. Um, Let's take uh, Jesus. I just had a Jesus. It just help him, Lord. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate my head. I hate it. Hate it. I'm gonna come back to it. Uh, I just just lost it. But one thing that you said is um, t when you were answering this question, you said, "Is it blind or is it is it blind eyes?" Because she says, "Question yourself." You know what I'm saying? Is it, so is it blind eyes? It's almost the same thing. I don't think. Look at it. 
Is it blurry eyes? Like, so you see what you see, but you don't really see, or are you fooling yourself? Are you fooling yourself? Oh, blurring your eyes, or are you fooling yourself? When women think of these other situations that didn't even happen yet, or get in their heads and have all these, like, paths. That's the question. Right. right? And then you said something about being rational. Right. And I think that's how women think, is that in order to make a decision, we have to go through a lot of options. In our head. Even if mm-hmm. the mic, we, have, we go through the one that's, you know, makes sense, and it doesn't make sense, and everything in between. And I know, I know that's how I think, personally, mm-hmm. is that I could be thinking about a tweet that you sent back in 2012, and it mm-hmm. might be relevant to the situation. It doesn't make any sense, mm-hmm. but my, I will go there. I might not act on it, but it's definitely going to cross through my mind. I think a lot of women do go through that process. And I think you said the word process as well, mm-hmm. or maybe you did. Somebody said process. Yeah, I, I just think... That talking to yourself thing and just getting it out loud or, t- or just just going through it. It's, and the process is the problem. So let's take the same scenario. Uh-huh. You say something. Mm-hmm. You say something that you don't remember you say that contradicts who you are. And men do this all the time. I'm going to listen to you, lie to somebody else, and I'm going to apply it to myself. Mm-hmm. Right? But I'm not going to act on said lie, even mm-hmm. though I know you may be lying because I know it's in you, mm-hmm. until I can act factually prove it. Flip the switch. You watch me lie to somebody else, right? So you know what's in me. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't actually lie, but because of the scenario that you've seen, you think I've lied, now things change. Mm-hmm. So I think you may I think you may, may be lying about something, but I can't prove it, so I'm going to let things be status quo. Vice versa, I'm going to come back home, and now pillows are thrown at me. You upset. Your day is changing. It's like, what did I do? You know what I'm saying? Because I then, watched you lie to somebody else. Now nah, I'm mad. That's what you're saying? You think I may be lying, so you created the storyline. We've done the same thing. We've done the exact same thing. I thought you may have been lying, so I created the storyline. Men mm-hmm. do it too. You know what I'm saying? You thought I was lying, so you created the storyline. I, however, let the relationship be status quo as it was. So if we was already happy. I can't prove it. I'm going to be happy until I can prove it. I'm going to let us be happy until we can prove it. Sometimes with women... Instead of that happening and it let it being played out to be figured out, the actual situation changed. Let's let's, let's take another example. You know what? This is, and I'm being the woman. He off today. You know what? He could probably take me out to the movie, which means he could also cook dinner. You know what I'm saying? We. Uh, I, I mentioned the other day I went to go see the movie. I mentioned the other day. So he going to have something planned for me when I get home. Right, because mm. he's 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 he, he got the time. She comes home. There's nothing planned. She's upset. Right. She's gonna take it as being inconsiderate. It never happened. Right, because I she clearly said something that she wanted to do, and he didn't think of it when he had the chance to take me out and do it. He has an off day, and nothing has happened today. Now. She's upset, and when he gets home, she's upset. She Now, she's upset for that reason. She hasn't spoken to him. She hasn't said it. She hasn't mentioned it. But he's getting it. He's getting the guilt, the eye, the look, the, you know. Now, when he asks, hey, what's wrong? She's going to say nothing, as most of them do. Nothing's wrong. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, well, something's wrong. Something's changed. It's nothing. Now, later on, it may come out, maybe at the end of the night, like, you really had a chance to take me to go see the movie, and now you got to work for another six days, and you didn't even take me. <laughs> and you know I mentioned it. It's like, and he's like, I didn't even hear you, or et cetera, et cetera, happened. That's why I couldn't, even if I could have thought about it. And then it's like, uh, okay. But all of them to that point, he got he got the guilt trip, the eyes, and with the mat, the stairs, and everything. And now I'm saying if that was vice versa, you know what? I've been telling her I won't, man. You know what I'm saying? She gonna buy me, man. It's coming out. I know she knows it's coming out. You know what I'm saying? Now, if she come home and it's not mad and it's not there, even if I'm disappointed or the guy disappointed, he's going to let it go. And if anything, try to insinuate or imply or put it on her mind so she can go do it then. But he won't hold it against her and give her the actual mad reaction. I don't want to be in that relationship. No, no, no. That, 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 <laughs> well, no, but that, no, about, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, like no, yeah. but that's what I'm saying from insecure and Mary. Five minutes. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying from insecure and Mary and Mary J. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mary J. is constantly in her head and trying to have this per this perfect relationship. Like when she had the older guy at the end of whatever season that was, and they were mad. You know, they never talked about being actually exclusive and moving together. She decided she wanted to be with him. He never wanted to let go of his apartment. And while she moved her toothbrush in and he moved it out, mm-hmm. 
he's like, she's mad because, you know, well, she sees this picture now. She sees it for herself. So she's chasing it. He's like, ne nevertheless, that's never what he pictured. And he never agreed to actually have her move in or have a joint situation. But she did. So she's genuinely upset about something that she know that they've never had a conversation about and that he wasn't actually conducive to doing. Is there but, a question? Well, we, she's just, <laughs> just talking Now about. you're beating the, you're, you're tampering with the witness. What do you call that? Badger and the witness. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it was just tying, it was just tying it back together. No, I to, get what you're saying. I just think that the solution to that and then maybe like, um, it's not this, th that's not every relationship, but there are relationships like that. that. It's just communication and having that conversation. That if that if if your woman does do that to you, then um, not not you per se, but if, if you're in a relationship and that happens to you, and your woman's mad at you and she's telling you nothing, then maybe you guys need to work out some way I to think it's a trait. Nah, it, I'm sorry. I said I actually think that's a trait. Mm, I disagree with that. I, I I'm sure you do, yeah. but because to to me it's it's as bad as. To again, I don't. I, talk, I don't. I don't talk to myself like those characters do. <laughs> I mean, well, that's that's extra. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's extra. Although I've seen it because yeah. I have a best friend that I've watched mm -hmm. do things like. Well, it's okay to talk to yourself. I guess. Yeah, you it is. I'm not saying it. you can't no, answer I'm just yourself. Saying I don't, right? The talking to yourself is not the problem. It's the answering yourself all the time. Right? It's how it manifests all the time. That's First of all. We're all complex and different individuals. It's gonna be it's so different from one person to the next. So I don't I think it's just like that's always a shaky ground when you're um, generalizing mm -hmm. because it's it's gonna vary from woman to woman, from man to man. And um, we're 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 more complex than you guys. You know, we have all these hormones that we that we have. There may be a different uh, person on this day than the person is that you know through you know we we cycle we have we have cycles every month and that and, you do? and what kind of cycles um <laughs> <I'm sorry>. cycles. <laughs> <laughs> and um those and, and lunar cycles there's all these different things that we that we have to and we 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 actually carry children inside of our bodies like that that's gonna affect a person in their psyche and how they deal with things um, as do like just the changing of your hormones every month. So not to make an excuse, but we are a little bit more complex than someone that than men. The men. I'm sorry. Can I? Can I? I, I, I don't. I agree, and uh, I disagree with that one. <laughs> no, well, it's not. She, just, rebut, she, but, she just gave you facts. It's not necessarily. Well, I, I can give her facts. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> there's facts. There's not her facts. There's just facts. There's just facts. There's, but I don't know. <laughs> women have children, and they have uh, menstrual cycles. I I don't know. Mm -hmm. What you t there's just, there's nothing to disagree with. <laughs> like, oh, we but, have we have puberty as well. But we have. I'm not saying you're <laughs> saying you dis well, you're, 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 you're saying you disagree that. with what she just said. I'm like there's nothing to well, disagree well, with. Well, I'm saying I agree that we're both complex creatures, but I think on a given basis, you could be meet someone who's more complex than you, even if they're cross gender. So even as mm -hmm. as Clark, so I believe a woman can meet a man that's more complex than her. Like I believe that there could be a very simple woman. You know what I'm saying that that's really very simple. That's very clear to understand. And there could be a man that's so complex that he f's that up. That's you know true. So that's I don't right. believe that that's a spectrum across. But it depends mm -hmm. on what he's dealt with in his life. If he's been abused and he had to deal with gang violence, he's been shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying he had no father, or whatever, and she came from a perfect. And all she has to do is be a girl. Well, then it's she it dealt with be. the she dealt with the normal things of being a girl. But his life, his those mitigating circumstances may play a part in his psyche, which make him more complex. Well, need if to you be. have this very simple, this is just a general question, but it, based off what you said, you have this very simple woman who's very easy to understand. Does she still possess that trait that all women have? Yeah, but it does, it's oh, still, no. it, that's not a, see, but even. She's simple and she's easy to understand, so she's not going to come home and do that. But she's still a woman. It doesn't, that, that trait doesn't mean that it happens in just relationships. Is she, she could, she could have that trait in not a relationship. It could be around work. It could be around her career. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, people. Saying saying talk to yourself and have affirmations is to know that you don't talk yourself out of something. And a lot of those conversations where people don't talk to themselves, talk themselves in and out of something that they're good at, even though the path is sitting right there in front of them. Although that's people in general, we're all passionate about something and we should be doing that in general. Just as an example, it can be. It doesn't have to just be positioned toward relationship. So a woman that's very solid in relationships, unless they doesn't do that may have that trait to where she still 
talks herself out of something and then when some somebody else comes around so maybe she has a bad relationship with her mom you know what i'm saying so she as you as you mentioned you say have bad she mentioned you have a bad relationship with mom and she thinks her mom's always gonna be one way we talked about lack of change right so her mom has changed but a scenario has happened where she thinks her mom has responded a certain way so now she treats her mom said way without actually talking to her mom because that's how she has it set in stone because of the story that she has conjured up in her head so it could happen. It's applicable in different ways. All I'm saying is most men deal with that situation differently. Even if we, because I think, I believe we all think relative, well, we think relatively the same, we comprehend differently as far as men and women. But how we handle it, show me is how men are. Show me, you know what I'm saying? Let me see the facts. We'll go off to that. What's the bottom line? Women have a clue. Put a it, mo- I, I would, can I just chime in? Go I ahead. say, there's this emotional when it comes to men and women I have had uh, several experiences I would just say I'm not going to say in general like but there's an emotional rash there's an emotional thought process that's different like I got to I got to cater to my wife on an emotional level on certain things even though I know it's like 1 plus 1 equals 2 but she might feel like she need, you know, she might feel differently. It's you get what I'm saying? Today. Yeah, it's three. <laughs> it, you know, why does it always have to be one plus one equals two? And it's just emotional reaction. And then, and and it's like, all right, well, I need to. Although I see the the facts in front of me, I still have to make sure that we're addressing the emotional temperature in this moment, the state. Whatever they're going through, and that and that has to be addressed. And it's just like, in my mind, yes, no, you know, it's not. It's we nothing, already know, you know what, what it is. It's we know what it is, but we got to take this route to get there. Yeah. Well, I think like, what about people in gay relationships when there's two men? What they have they, they I, stay. I, I mean, yeah, but they, but that. you know, the reality is that <laughs> in this world that there are gay people and they they go through um, the same issues that we go through as heterosexuals. But then you got the B's and you got the T's and you got the. Bees that sometimes go to yeah, tease. Yeah, I, I mean, but, but bees and tease have nothing to do with like. A, a, a maybe that also plays into the roles. I, I don't. Well, know. I will say this because I, belie- I like believe that role, you can the, be born the role in such a way. And on. since we carry both traits, and I don't think lastly well, it don't matter because you have women that are born the same way. But I think when you have that dominating factor, where obviously they're gay and they sh- and they share the more feminine trait, then they take on those. Oh my goodness! You the, just those sold se- on this. I don't think I can change your mind, but I think it's, it's I think <laughs> it's, like, it's all about I'm so confused. I, I think it's all about I mean, in terms of like, I, I don't think that to, to put the jacket of just being completely emotional and um, concocting stories on women is just a little um, generalized. I don't think that I think it depend. It may just be the women that you're attracting or the women that you have, di- you know, so, what I mean? so wait, 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 wait. Wow, so wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like so, so, hold on. Wait, wait, right. Cause <laughs> first she just said we're women. We have cycles. We have hormones. I mean, we're emotional. And now, cause I understand, I understand what he's saying. Like, I know he knows what it is. We both know what it is, but there's a process we got to go through. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We know one plus one is two, but we still got to write the one over here, the plus the here, the one. It's almost like meeting a guy, a guy that you know before a lot of women, not all. Meeting a guy that you know you want to have sex with. If he comes, if he approaches you and tells you, I want to fuck, that's the turnoff. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to do it because of how it makes you feel. Now, if he goes through the rigmarole of wow. being polite, I'm. Nowadays, I, I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Depends, but, on, per, but, per, right. per, depends on who someone may be drawn to that. But, no, no, no. I, I agree with you, but we're talking about the over the overwhelming majority, mm-hmm. and just how we've been taught, mm-hmm. men. How you hear? You know what? If he just tell me that right. If he just tell me that right off the bat, I'm not gonna do it. And I've heard it. You know what I'm saying? It's been said to me. Well, had you told me that, you know, we, you know, a long time ago, then it's all right. Well, if I'd have told you that. You would have walked away. Well, true, but and so it's like that's why we have to play the game, or he has to mark the character one plus one. And so I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I'm I mean, not. Yeah, he had a lot. He went under the river and through the woods. <laughs> All I was saying was, is that there's times where I've had this experience, and other men have tried to explain is that yes, emotions is a part of the scenario when it comes to your relationships with women and obviously there's always you know there's oh, always the exceptions to the rule i was just giving him an, an example of like our complex complexities but mm-hmm. at the same time i do feel like cause it's, it's not a general thing i think that we're that we are we're compl- complex individually 
and individuals you know what i mean so like what affects you may not affect me what mm -hmm. may, what sends you um wondering what's on the phone may be something completely different than me what mm -hmm. what you know that's that's all it's just like dangerous to generalize that's just my I and agree. emotions mm -hmm. don't always make sense and that's right. what makes them mm -hmm. yeah. emotions like, it's hard right. to it's hard to right. rationalize certain things right. it's like you're angry about a text and then and, and you're just like you, maybe the guy's like, hey, it's my job. F that. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. no, and, and I agree, but I just think, because also I'm one that thinks men are more emotional than women. Mm. Like, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Like, I don't care how hard the dude is and what he doesn't do because I know how men internalize, you know what I'm saying, which is usually the issue. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, right. you can't internalize emotions and then say you aren't emotional or you aren't sensitive because writing you know which is cathartic talking or not internalized would allow that to be cathartic would make you not less emotional but if we all walking around not saying nothing with everything going on around us well then i'm as i'm as emotional as you are and you're actually less emotional than me because at least you get to cry about it you know what i'm saying a good cry works for everybody but men don't cry so you're not gonna tell me that they let you gonna tell me that they're less emotional than women no, yeah, I'm so. not a man, so I don't. I really don't know how, how emotional right. men well, get. Men are sensitive. He's, well, he's, I don't some, get. The, he writes some, some are. I mean, how how they how they portray it is one thing, and a lot of men are silent with it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they'll yeah. they'll do things they'll do things discreetly or differently. Drink it away. You know what I'm saying? Well, just weed. just just not even that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you hurt me. You know what I'm saying I'll be with you for, but I'll never marry you. You know what I'm saying? Out of spite. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, why you just didn't talk that out? Let that be known. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you would, as a woman, most women would. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? But we're coming to the near so. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you got coming up and what you're getting into. Um, yeah, so my book, uh, 100 Things Every Black Girl Should Know, uh, is available. Uh, you can purchase it on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Um, the ebook right now, right? right now, right now. <laughs> Go get it. Um, also, um, if you are uh, in the city where the movie Step is playing, um, it's a movie about uh, the a girl uh, from Baltimore. Uh, some girls that went to go to a high school in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and they all um, end up going to college. They they have, they have the focus on, is on three girls: Bless and Taylor and Corey. Um, it's an amazing documentary film. It was it won um, the J Special Jury Award at Sundance this year, and I wrote the end title song performed by Cynthia Revo um, from The Color Purple, mm -hmm. and it's pretty cool. Awesome. It's like really, really, really. I seen their really interview. Uplifting. They interviewed on the Breakfast Club recently. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. they did. So they did. I want to say what's up to my out. mom who's watching from Oakland. Oakland, what up? Shout out. <laughs> I can't believe she's still in Oakland, right? Like, yeah, she's still kicking in. us all out. Right. Now, <laughs> she's Ellie Andrews. <laughs> oh, oh, she's Ellie. Well, <laughs> Sally Andrews is Oakland. That's, yeah. that's Oakland. And peace to keep the sneak. Yeah. I'm praying for you, brother. Yes, sir. Sure. Now, my co host isn't here, so I wouldn't be right if I didn't give you flack from a bit from Oakland. Because every, since I've met that woman, every person I have, woman virtually has come through the door, but from Oakland or even in the streets. He, that, she was yesterday, I got a random, uh, I got a wrong yeah. call from 510. <laughs> I'm like, that is the Lord in Aquila Trine spiting me. <laughs> a wrong, how do I get a wrong call Everywhere. from 510 we out of all here. places? Skyline. You got something Skyline. coming up, Courtney? You want to let us know? Oh. Um, I am. Working, working every day. Hey. Twitter, Twitter, Vault TV. That's where you find me at. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you did, uh, seen the, the news hit today I did the on news uh, hits. on uh, on oh a bunch of right. But I'm saying yeah. I, I just seen the one you did with uh three. What was it? Three hundred Montana. Oh did yeah, you, do, you did one on him right. Montana uh, three hundred out Montana. of Montana. Yeah, shout so, out to him. Check out Vault TV. Check out my interviews on there. I'm over there. Um, got an app coming soon. Felly, so that's on the that. website right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> interview with Felly. So yeah. you know, go check that out. That's what I'm working on. Well, that's what's up. Well, if you believe in, you become, and you what look both. Well, you boy, you. Um, but I know I just want to interrupt you. I was gonna give you, <laughs> see, and I was gonna give, I was gonna give you the final words too. You know what I'm saying? Now, Dan Cecil. Oh me? Oh. <laughs> oh you? Yeah. Uh, dance at Dance Hustle on all social media platforms, and um, you can find me on Facebook Live. Shout out to everybody on my Facebook. You know, that seems like where my most people is tuned in to the show. But I want y'all to go on our YouTube. We we stream live on YouTube right now on the Morris Media page. So follow that. Well, like I was saying, Jody, um, 
if you believe and become and you know when you look both ways um if you question yourself which is the definition of critical thinking you will find yourself amazed not only at the outcome but your future endeavors um questioning yourself allows you f to go through the storm and many you will weather um we have Tora Stinson here and she's given us the depth about what every black woman should go through carry this book which you don't um uh, Messed it up. Anyway, so this is Love from Love Sessions. <laughs> I'm Dontrell uh, Detroit. Uh, from the back, we got the wonderful poetess, Tara, Dance Hustle, Courtney. Uh, this is Love Sessions. We are, Same well, <laughs> this is every woman. They are all in need. Uh, poetess, cue us up. Yeah! Awesome. Yeah.